was very seamless actually it was a very tiny needle and it wasn't yeah it wasn't scary at all and yeah I don't I don't feel um woozy at all I've not really felt anything I, I feel I feel great I was definitely really excited at the prospect of taking part. I think there was a small part of me that definitely was nervous because this is such a new technology that's not really been tried before. So of course, there was a little part of me that was apprehensive, but the bigger part of me was wanting to be part of some potentially groundbreaking research. Yeah, so it is a bit of a big commitment. Um, so I have to come back um, once a week, um, almost um, every week for, for a couple of months, and they're gonna be monitoring me, taking my bloods and, and seeing how I'm doing. Um, and then I also will get a booster vaccine as part of this trial as well. I was given a, yes, a full battery of, of tests and they were looking for lots of different things. They were checking my blood work and looking at various different things about how my organs are working and stuff like that. Um, they had to check whether I was pregnant as well because you're not allowed to take part in a, in a trial if you're pregnant. I think I'm probably going to be more monitored now than I ever will be through the rest of my life. So I, I know that I'm in very safe hands. If there is a small risk, you know, this is definitely for, for the greater good. And we, we are in a global crisis right now and we need big, big, brave solutions. And so we need more people to take part in research. Otherwise, um, you know, we can't advance medicine. So what's unique about this vaccine and uh, different about other vaccines that you may be experienced with or may have had yourself is that this is completely synthetic. So it's an RNA molecule which can um, self-amplify. So what I mean by that, it's a, it's a message that is normally used by your body. It's a um, sort of molecule that's used by your body. And then we've been able to uh, program that so that it will tell your muscle cells to make small amounts of the spike protein, the outer coating of the, of the COVID virus particle. So we've done the dose evaluation part where we tested three different dose levels in 15 volunteers and we went from the very lowest to the highest that we're planning to give in humans and to see uh, how well tolerated and uh, whether it's safe and we'll also be looking at the antibody responses later down the line. We've now completed that part of the study and we're moving forward to testing different doses but in a different way and in larger numbers. We're looking at vaccinating um, uh, 320 people together. We've already done the first few uh, and over the next couple of weeks we'll be doing 105 people. And the crucial difference now is that our participants won't know which dose they're getting and that allows um, them to fill in their diaries without, without um, any prejudice so the data is um, very clear. But vaccine research takes years usually uh, what we've been able to do is because we've taken the molecular approach, we have been able to speed up those, particularly those early phases, you know, moving from when the, uh, pr the sequence of the virus was first published and um, way back when in, in the winter time, and uh, moving to then designing the vaccine and having a candidate that we could move quickly into preclinical trials. And you will have seen across the globe with the development of other vaccine candidates, a similar rapidity. It's now the clinical trials that take uh, um, a little bit longer um, and we are moving at pace, but with all the safety checks that we would normally do and in fact even more so.